And now we will uh, start with the presentation of student awards. We have a lot of awards, you may notice. Um, partly this is because your school has been around for 100 years and donors over the decades have sought to remember journalists who inspired them or uh, as you heard in that um, wonderful example. But there are, I think, two things about awards that um, I really value. One is that they model excellent work for all of us to keep reminding us what we should be reaching for. And the other is they inspire good journalists who win them to remember in moments of discouragement that they're capable of doing really great work. And so your award-winning career begins now with Professor Elisa Solomon, who will pre present the first award. Morning. I'm kind of verklempt from that <laughs> speech just now, so I have to, like, to gather myself. Um, I'm, uh, I'm here to present the Nona Balakian Award, uh, which was established in 1992 to honor the student who shows the most promise for achievement in writing about literature. Nona Balakian, a 1943, gra 1943 graduate of the Journalism School, was an editor at the New York Times Book Review and she had much influence on American arts and letters for more than four decades. So for an astute essay that invites us to see the poetry of Keats in the light of contemporary radical politics, showing how his 200-year-old poem, Ode to a Nightingale, harmonizes with Black Lives Matter, the Nona Balakian Prize this year goes to Irvija Banerjee. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce the next presenters, Professors Emily Bell and Mark Hansen. Uh, the Award for Excellence in Computational Journalism is co-sponsored by the Brown Institute and the Tau Center. It honors work by current MS or MA students that makes exceptional use of computation in the service of journalism or makes an extraordinary computation to our understanding of how data, code, and algorithms change the nature of reporting. This year, as well as reading out on phones, which is very computational, uh, <laughs> this year the award goes to a story published last summer in Wired magazine entitled How Americans Wound Up on Twitter's List of Russian Bots. Topical. The story identifies and then interviews people whose accounts were suspended but who are not tied to, the Russia, to Russia's internet research agency and whose pattern of tweeting shows signs of being real people. By interviewing the owners of the three uh, of three of the 20 accounts that appear to have been incorrectly suspended as part of Twitter's sweep for IRA activity, the article unpacks some of the consequences of algorithmic decision making and what it means to be a type one error. They also discuss the need, I'm glad someone found that funny. Um, <laughs> they, they also discuss the need for some form of digital due process for individuals whose accounts are taken down by the likes of Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. The winners of the 2019 Brown Tower Award for Excellence in Computational Journalism uh, are Erin Riglin and Shreya Vijanathan. Come on up. Thank you. Uh, and the next award will be presented by, whoops, by Keith Goggin, uh, class of 1991. 
I'm just going to put that right there so everyone can see it, but inside is a very nice piece of crystal for the winner. <laughs> it's not as impressive in the box. Um, good morning. Congratulations to all of you. I'm Keith Goggin, and I'm a member of the class of 1991 and a member of the J School's Board of Visitors. But this morning, I'm here on behalf of the Columbia Alumni Association to present the Bill Campbell Award. The CAA represents the worldwide network of more than 350,000 Columbia alumni and maintains over 100 clubs and shared interest groups. As graduates of the J School, you become members of this vibrant group, and I encourage you to take advantage of all the CAA has to offer. Bill Campbell was a trusted mentor and confidant to Steve Jobs, Tim Cook, Larry Page, Eric Schmidt, Mark Zuckerberg, and numerous other tech titans. He was a graduate of Columbia College and Columbia Teachers College. He was also the co-captain and later the head coach of Columbia's football team, and for the rest of his life, people referred to him as coach. From 2005 to 2014, Bill Campbell was the chairman of Columbia's Board of Trustees, and he was the co-founder and champion of the Columbia Alumni Association. Perhaps the keystone of the CAA's accomplishments has been the development of a culture of university citizenship. Bill Campbell embodied this concept better than anyone else. Lee Bollinger called him the beating heart of Columbia University. His example has inspired so many of us to do the same. Established in 2016 and presented each year at graduation, the Campbell Award recognizes one student from each of Columbia's schools who has, established, who has exhibited Bill's generosity of spirit, his quality of leadership, and his devotion to university citizenship. This is the only award that's gonna be handed out today that steps beyond the journalism school itself. And this is a student who has had an impact that's broader than just the one school. There are 18 schools and affiliated institutions at Columbia, and we are looking at the CAA to represent people that understand that this is a cohesive whole and not just a silo. This year's Campbell Award winner from the Journalism School worked with students university-wide to encourage active participation in the Sexual Respect Initiative. He served as co-president of the Columbia chapter of the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association and as an ambassador to the Journalism School's Sexual Respect Initiative. It gives me great pleasure to present the Campbell Award to Ken Ingram. I can tell from the response that Ken has done an excellent job of energizing all of you. <laughs> the next award will be presented by Professor Betsy West. Woo! Morning, everybody. Please here, okay. <laughs> so, the DuPont Judy F. Crichton Award was established in honor of a pioneer in documentary filmmaking, Judy Crichton, who produced docs for CBS Reports and ABC News and was the founding executive producer of the PBS series American Experience. Judy was really a role model for many filmmakers, including Professor Cross and myself, at a time when documentary filmmaking was dominated by men. Not so much anymore, which is uh, great news. Um, this year's DuPont Judy F. Crichton Award goes to a documentary that is a poignant and revealing look at a side of immigration that we rarely see. Guanajuato Norte, directors Ingrid Holmstead and Sana Malik, please come accept the DuPont Judy F. Crichton Award for your wonderful film.
And we have one more award for his lively and informative video, Inaccessible, about access to subways by the disabled. The honorable mention is awarded to Alan Devlin. The next award will be presented by a good friend of the Journalism School, Mike Kendall. A very personal note. When I was sitting where you are now, class of 1953, most of the members of the faculty most of the members of the faculty were not even born. <laughs> and I have the distinction also of having been a copy boy at the New York Times while going to school during the day, working at night, and running copy for Maya Berger, who was not only a wonderful wonderful journalist, but a great man, and helpful to younger journalists all the time. Well, it's my pleasure today to present the Philip Greer Scholarship Fund Awards, presented for the first time in 1988, established in honor of the late Philip Greer, financial correspondent and columnist for the New York Herald Tribune, the Washington Post, and ABC News, and I might add that he wasn't accepted at this school either. <laughs> but he sent his son 25 years later, who was a graduate of the school. At any rate, the Philip Greer Awards are for the recognized outstanding financial writing. The MS winner is Sarah Painter, And the MA winner is Nick Carello. And the next presenter is Professor Linnell Hancock. Good morning, everyone. You really clean up good. Uh -huh. yeah. So I am honored to present the Heckinger Award for this year's best education story. We decided this year to split it between a documentary film and a print story, two different animals. So for the first one, a moving film about a high school Latin music program for Spanish-speaking immigrants. The award goes to Katerina Barbera and Davi Merchant. And the second prize is for a rigorously reported print story 
about American universities that protect professors accused of sexual harassment and sexual assault. The widespread practice is known as Pass the Predator. For her courageous reporting, the award goes to Hannah Critchfield. <laughs> And the next award will be presented by my colleague, Bill Gruskin. Good morning, everybody. Look at you all shaved and wearing clip-on ties. And <laughs> very impressive. Um, I was... Uh, uh, I, I was asked to, uh, I, I was one of the judges along with Professor West on the editorial writing uh, um, prize and we're very pleased she and I agreed completely on the winner uh, for his editorial about the need to uh, encompass a multilingual um, uh, atmosphere in the United States. We're very pleased to give this to Justin Snyder. Congratulations. And the next award will be presented by Dean Muha. The Peter Keller Prize honors excellent editing skills it was created to honor Peter Keller, who spent 56 years at the Wall Street Journal. He started in the composing room and rose to become national news editor. As night editor for over 25 years, he created one of the highest editing standards in the nation. He trained several generations of reporters and editors who call him the living legend of the journal. This year's prize goes to a student in a class that involved a series of group projects. According to the instructors who nominated her, this student, and I quote, quickly emerged as the de facto leader of her team, as well as a resource for the other groups in the class. Like any good editor, this student called for skepticism in handling sources, pointing out their various motives. She pushed her group to obtain useful records and worked to build good habits on protecting the identities of confidential sources. To prepare for the writing process, she created a master memo where her team listed all of its findings and supporting evidence. She also took the lead on collating the reporting strands, building out the top of the story, while also actively editing teammates as they worked together to write a complete draft. Classmates from other teams have asked this year's Keller winner to edit their work and for help managing relationships on their teams. And outside of the class, she edits works for students in other classes. Having seen her in action, it would be hard for me to disagree. Um, this, this year's Peter Keller Prize for Excellence in Editing goes to Catherine Long. And the next award will be presented by Professor June Cross. Hi. 
Um, the Joan Connor Broadcast Journalism Award is traditionally presented to the MS student, boy, these slides are bright, um, who, um, who is generally considered the top video student in the school. Uh, it's um, intended for the student who has produced the most thought-provoking and original either television or radio reporting. And it was established by Dean Emerita Joan Connor, who so far is the only woman dean that served at the journalism school, um, who's ha had a long award-winning career as a producer for WNET Channel 13. The Connor Award this year goes for the first time to a graduate from the documentary specialization who I saw bounce back time and time again from setbacks and obstacles. Her writing is clear, crisp, and well-researched. She was thoughtful, organized, and approached her work seriously. Her um, master's thesis, um, in, uh, produced in conjunction with her partner, explored the story of a family of an autistic child who discovered that music was the way to communicate. The winner of this award is Abby Lieberman. <laughs> The next award will be presented by Professor Sam Friedman. The Linton Fellowship in Book Writing is funded by the Linton Foundation which as some of us know is also a major donor to the J. Anthony Lucas Book Prizes. And this fellowship is intended to encourage excellence in nonfiction writing and help support research by the next generation of nonfiction authors. This year, as every year, there are two winners. The first winner is being honored for her book in progress about the relationship between a Rhode Island fisherman who do the Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, who, to the consternation of other people in his industry, insists on tagging fish to see where they end up. And the relationship between him and the giant tuna he tags that's found more than a decade later all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. And it's what that relationship and that saga tells us about the sustainability of fisheries, about the dangerous commercial boom in tuna consumption, and about the place the commercial fishermen and fisherwomen have between polluters and the most pure environmentalists. The award goes to an MS, I'm sorry, an MA science concentrator, Karen Pynchon. Okay, stay put, we'll, we'll do the photo. Stay, stay up here. Um, I promise you that was not granted under the Affirmative Action for Canadians program. <laughs> the, the second of the Linton Fellowships goes to a book of investigative narrative about the fact that what seem like the disparate scandals of sexual assault and predation within various Olympic sports are actually joined together by the complete failure of oversight, and in fact, in some ways, the complicity of the United States Olympic Committee, which enjoys a congressionally authorized monopoly over the Olympics and its symbols in this country. For this work, the Linton Fellowship goes to one of our Spencer Education Journalism Fellows, Alexandra Starr.
The next award will be given by the director of the MA program, Eliza Gray. Hello. The Arthur J. Memorial Prize allows a leading MA student to complete an ambitious story. So, for the further reporting of a podcast about a forensic scientist in Virginia <laughs> whose methods cast doubt on the thousands of criminal cases she worked, the Arthur J. Memorial Prize goes to Sophie Bierman and Tessa Kramer. The MA Thesis Prize recognizes excellent original reporting and fine storytelling. And there are three winners. For a story about the impact of oil, explora oil exploration on the Big Cypress National Preserve in the Everglades, the award for second runner-up for best MA thesis goes to Dean Russell. For a story about the far right's efforts in Brazil to rewrite the nation's history, the award for first runner-up for best MA th thesis goes to Leticia Duarte. And finally, for a story about the exploitation of miners in Madagascar to meet the West's booming demand for healing crystals, the best MA thesis award goes to Tess McClure. The next award will be presented by Professor Meg Kissinger. Greetings. Melvin Mencher was a professor at the J School for 28 years before his retirement in the early 1990s. Upon his retirement, his students established an award in his name to recognize the kind of reporting that Mencher championed. Hard-nosed exploration of difficult social issues. 
This year's award was judged by a faculty panel consisting of Professors Ari Goldman and Paige Williams. They left the final decision on the winner to Mencher himself, who's 92 years old and still lives in the neighborhood. Okay, spoiler alert, I hope she wore her Fitbit because Mencer chose a deeply reported story relevant to the Me Too movement. This is a story about how universities pass along harassing professors who continue to harm students. It follows the case of a science professor who gets big grants and runs scientific labs and who is a serial offender on several campuses. The winner of the story and the winner of this year's Mencher Award is, ta-da, Hannah Critchfield. The next award will be presented by Professor Nina Alvarez. Hello. This is so cool. The Henry N. Taylor Award was established in 1962 by friends of Henry Taylor, a journalist who was killed on assignment in the Congo at the age of 31. The award is given annually to a student in the international program who has demonstrated the qualities of a superior journalist. The award includes a grant providing for travel in the United States before returning to his or her country. You've got your work cut out for you. This year, the award goes to Emily Paulin. And the next award will be presented by Dean Sheila Cornell. Congratulations, everyone. It's my honor to present three James A. Wexler Memorial Awards. These awards were established by the Pisces Foundation in memory of the former editor and columnist of the New York Post. The first Wexler Award goes to the student who submits the best story on a significant international issue. For her piece on the struggles of the understaffed U.S. Embassy in Russia, this year's award goes to Francesca Regalado. The second Wexler Award is presented to the student who, in the opinion of the faculty, submits the best story on a significant national issue. For their piece on the staffing challenges faced by the USDA Meat Inspector Service, this year's award goes to Brett Backman and Samantha Josephine Stokes. And the third Wexler Award is presented to the student who, in the faculty's opinion, submits the best story on a significant local issue for a deeply reported enterprise story about Uber's unfair policy of driver deactivation 
The James A. Wexler Award for Local Reporting goes to Marcus Lim. The next award will be presented by Professor Karen Stabiner. I am pleased to present the Lewis Winnick Prize. It is endowed by the Winnick family and is given for the best story about New York City. For her piece on the harrowing experiences of underserved pregnant women and their un underpaid doulas in New York City's massive medical system, the award goes to Sophia Qualia. getting there. Um, each year we award honors in the MS program, only in the MS program. In the MA program we don't have a curriculum that would allow us to do something similar. Um, but in the MS program, each, in each class, uh, the professors select the top 10% for honors and then Melanie and some uh, machine full of ping pong balls accumulates the points across the year. And, uh, and we're able to announce now the, the uh, winners of honors in the MS program. So I'm gonna read out your names uh, and just uh, please stand up. I, every year I say hold your applause, you never do. Don't bother, just <laughs> applaud them. Uh, Libby Cathy. <laughs> Remain standing, please. <laughs> Josefina de la Fuente. Claire Duffy. Jonas Eckblum. Audrey Gray. Lauren Harris. Caroline Hopkins. Ingrid Holmquist. Laura Regan Kleinschmidt. Brittany Marielle Kriegstein. <laughs> Abby Lieberman. <laughs> Catherine Long. Joshua Lucas. <laughs> Lucas Manfield. <laughs> Sarah Mowad. <laughs> hey. 
Carrie Monahan. Danielle Moran. Tomas Navia. Emily Paulin. Shrey Papat. Francesca Regalado. <laughs> Olivia Rheingold. <laughs> Tess Risky. Justin Brian Snyder. Yeah. Ali Swenson. Yeah. Giacomo Tonini. Yeah. Robert Tokenell. Pranshu Verma. <laughs> Emma Vickers. <laughs> Angela Wong. And finally, Catherine Zorek. Congratulations to all of you. Now, uh, the Pulitzer Traveling Fellowships, our last uh, awards. There are five of them. Um, one. Uh, they're all part of Joseph Pulitzer's legacy at the school, um, and they're designed to enable travel and study abroad. They come with a, a cash award to facilitate your travel. Uh, four of them are for MS students uh, who are the four highest um, performers in our honors system, and one is for an outstanding MA student who is, um, has a special interest in the arts and, art, and arts cr criticism. So the, the Pulitzer for culture, for a student with a special interest in the arts and art criticism goes to Adrian Mate. And now the four students who uh, came away with the highest honors points, uh, culminating in your valedictorian. Um, one of the Pulitzer Traveling Fellowships goes to Ali Swenson. Next goes to Libby Cathy. Yeah. Don't 
Congratulations, well done. Well done. The next goes to Catherine Long. Finally, your valedictorian, don't hold it against her, Lauren Harris. So that, in, that concludes the formal ceremony. I just want to say one word on behalf of, uh, I think, a lot of the faculty. I know Sheila and I were talking about this yesterday. Um, I've mentioned this to some of you. But this was really a great class. You were really superb. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of brilliant uh, careers ahead sitting with us today. but. It was really the constructive atmosphere that you created, really positive, uh, collaborative, um, and it's an odd thing about what, what we do on the faculty because you all go away and then an entirely new group turns up except for the PhD students, so we have complete loss of contact with whatever you did this year to make this such a positive year, but if you can put it in a bottle and hand it off to the next class, uh, we'd be grateful for that, but it was really a joy working with you, and I look forward to the more public ceremonies 